Well, you are a humane woman, Mrs. Corney. It's nice to be appreciated. These paupers in this parish, they don't appreciate me. anti pedocchio they are, Mrs. Corney. anti pedocchio We have given away, ma'am, a matter of 20 loaves and a cheese and a half this very afternoon, and the paupers are still not contented. Of course not. When would they be? Sweet, Mr. Bumble? Very sweet indeed, ma'am. Achoo! Bless you. Do you still keep a cat, ma'am? Yes, and kittens too. I'm so fond of them, you can't imagine, Mr. Bumble. They're so happy, so cheerful, so frolicsome that they are quite companions for me. Very nice animals indeed, ma'am, and so very domestic. So very fond of their home too that it's really quite a pleasure, I'm sure. Mrs. Corny, I mean to say this, but to any cat or kitten that can live with you, ma'am, and not be fond of its home, must be an idiot, ma'am, and don't deserve to live in it. Ah, oh, Mr. Bumble. There's no use disguising facts, ma'am. An idiot. I would drown it myself with pleasure. Then you're a very cruel man, and a very hard-hearted man besides. Hard-hearted, Mrs. Corney? Are you hard-hearted, Mrs. Corney? Dear me, what a very curious question coming from a single man. What can you want to know for, Mr. B? <laughs> Mr. Bumble, I shall scream! You're a naughty bad man If you think I can be proper, prim and haughty I can, and your pardon if I mention You must state your true intention Is there not another room here? No! If there were a riding room here Would there be? Well, there might We shall see I shall scream, I shall scream, and the little creature thinking I shall scream. You will wonder where the scream went when we come to my agreement, as my lovely dove is chubby, when she love a chubby hubby. See what I can get for this young scoundrel. Make sure you get a good price for him, Mr. Bumble.
to sound very liberal terms. Three pounds, please. Well, as a matter of fact, I was needing a boy. Well, then good, then it's settled. One parochial apprentice. Three pounds, please. Ah, if you don't mind, cash upon liking, Mr. Bumble. Cash upon liking. Mrs. Sowerberry! What is it? All of us stand over there, boy, and hold up your head, sir. Well, what do you want? What is it? Oh, Mr. Bumble. My dear, I have told Mr. Bumble that we may consider taking in this boy to help around the shop. Dear me, he's rather small. Yes, he is rather small, there's no denying it, but he'll grow, Mrs. Sowerberry. He'll grow. Ah, I dare say he will on our victuals and our drink. They're a waste of time, these workers, boys. Just cost more to keep than they're worth. Still, you men always think you know best. <laughs> yes, but he has an expression of melancholy on his face, which is fairly interesting. He'll make a delightful coffin follower. And not just one to attend the grown-ups, but for the children's practice, it would be very novel to have a follower in proportion, my sweet. Yes, it's a possibility. Very well then, boy, what's your name? Oliver. Oliver Twist, ma'am. A singular name? I am, ma'am, and what am I only choosing? Yours, Mrs. Bumble. Mine, Mrs. Sowerberry. We name our foundlings in alphabetical order. The last one was an S, Swubble, I named him. This was a T, Twist, I named him. An orphan, then, Mr. Bumble. An orphan, Mrs. Sowerberry. The boy's mother came to us destitute, gave birth to the boy, took one look at him, and promptly died without leaving so much more as a boarding name or even an address. <laughs> Very well then, Oliver Twist. Suppose you can look like that gentleman up there. Maybe. Perhaps if I get a tall hat. Nah, never mind about tall hats. No, the boy's quite right. This is um, proper and correct. Get the boy a tall hat. Stand in the picture, boy. <laughs> Delightful. Very becoming. Yes. For once, Henry, you might have had at least an idea. Can you hold that expression, boy, for a long time with a crowd of people watching you? Yes, ma'am, I think so. He's a poor undertaker's mute. I can see him in his black silk suit. Following behind the funeral procession with his features fixed in a suitable expression. There'll be horses with tall black plumes To escort us to the family tombs With mourners in all corners Who've been taught to weep in tune Then the coffin lined with satin That's your funeral and That's your funeral Large enough to wear your hearts And that's your funeral and That's your funeral We're just here to glamorize you For that endless sleep you might just as well look fetching when you're six feet deep. At the wake, we'll drink that toddy to the body beautiful. That's your funeral. That's our funeral. That's your funeral. If you're fond of overeating, that's your funeral. That's your funeral. Starve yourself by under eating, that's your funeral. Coffin follower. Are you eating? No, ma'am, not soon. Charlotte! 
Charlotte! What? Bring in something cold with your foot up for the dog. It hasn't been in all day, so we can go without him. I dare say the boy ain't too dainty to eat him, are you, boy? Charlotte, this is the new boy. Give it to him. Charlotte, don't just stand there. Pull the blinds. Henry, get to bed. A superb effect, the more I think of it. A follower in proportion. Have you done? Yes, ma'am. Good. The dogs have it next. Yeah. Well, there's your bed. Suppose you don't mind sleeping among coffins, I suppose. Well, it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't. You can't sleep nowhere else. Start cheeking your superiors. You don't know who I am, I suppose, Workhouse. No, sir, I can't say as I do. I'm Mr. Noah Claypool, and you're under me. So open up the blind, you other old scallywag. Noah, uh, I saved you a nice bit of bacon for Master's breakfast. Oh, pull up a chair for Mr. Noah, and then go over and take them bits and eat them in the corner. And make haste, because I want you to mind the shop. Did you hear? Did you hear, Workhouse? Here's your bacon. Noah! Nice and greasy, just how I like it. <laughs> what are you staring at, workhouse? Oh, Noah, let the boy alone. Let him alone. I'm giving this boy a change, you silly thing. His father left him alone, his mother left him alone. They all left him alone, except dear old, kind old Noah. I better go downstairs. Something's burning. Workhouse, how's your mother? You leave my mother out of this. She's dead. What'd she die of workouts? Shortage of breath? She's just dead. She died of a broken heart. Well, Tony, Rolly, right, fully airy workouts. What's that to you a sniveling now? 
You better not say anything more, see? Better not say anything more, see? The cheek of it. The workhouse cheek of it. You know, workhouse, it couldn't have been helped then. And of course, it can't be helped now. And I'm very sorry for it. But you must know, your mother was a downright fat. What did you say? And it's a good thing she died when she did, or else she'd been sent to Australia or hung from a gibbet as like a not. How dare you! Afraid of it while I speak, Oliver. Damn me! The boy must be mad. Not in half his senses could venture to speak to you like that. It's not madness, ma'am. It's meat. What? Meat, ma'am, meat. You've raised an artificial soul, unbecoming of his station in life. Damn me! This is what comes of being over generous. Oh, Henry, that boy, Oliver, we had to lock him up. Help! Someone's in there. It, no one's supposed to be in there. That's reserved for a very important client. You've been drinking. What do you have to say for yourself? He called my mother names. So what if she did, you ungrateful little wretch? She probably deserved what was said in words. She did it! She did! It's a lie! <laughs> Dawkins. Come to think of it, 
I don't got no intimate friends. Still, what's the difference between a pork sausage? You're coming with me. Are you sure Mr. Fagin will mind? Mind? Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself a word of the family. I'm taking you so strong. It's clear we're going to get along. Consider yourself a well in. Consider yourself part of the furniture. There isn't a lot to spare. Who cares? For what? Never we got to share. If it's a chance to be, we should see some bright days. Empty lot of days. White grouse. Always a chance we'll meet somebody to foot the bill.
I've brought you a new friend to see, Oliver Twist. So. I hope I shall have the honor of your most intimate acquaintance. We're very glad to see you, Oliver, my dear. Aren't we, my dears? Yeah! yeah. Mr. Twist has come to London to seek his fortune. So you've come to London to seek a fortune? Then we must see what we can do to help you. Are you hungry? Starving. Would you like a sausage? Charlie, drop the sausages! Dodger, take a chair by the fire for Oliver. Here, Fagin, these sausages are moldy. Shut up and drink your gin. <laughs> I see you're staring at the uh, pocket handkerchiefs. There's quite a few of them, ain't there? We've just hung them out ready for the wash, Oliver. The wash, that's all. Is this a uh, laundry then, sir? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I suppose a laundry would be a very nice thing indeed. But our line of business pays a little better. Don't it, my dears! I'll say it does. I'll say it does. You see, Oliver, in this life, one thing counts in the bank, large amounts. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Large amounts don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. That's so all about how it's done, my dears. Yeah! Ah, crook! 
<laughs> I hope we've all been hot at work today, my dears. Hot as nails. And what have you got for me today, Dodger, my dear? A couple of wipes. Well lined, I hope. Only the best. Well, not as heavy as they might be, but uh, very nicely made. Ingenious work, Manani Oliver. Did he make these himself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with his own lily white hand. <laughs> you be quiet, Charlie. And what do you got for me, my dear? Uh, Nose rags. And they're very nicely made. Red and blue. Although, you haven't picked out the initials too well, so they'll have to be picked out with a needle, won't they? You'll need to learn to do that too, Oliver, my dear. Won't he, boys? Yeah! And you'll need to make wallets like the Dodger and Charlie did here. You'd like that, wouldn't you, my dear? Oh, yes, Mr. Fagin. If you'll teach me. Oh, certainly, my boy. Just follow everything you see Dodger and Charlie do. Make them your models, especially that Dodger. He's going to be a right little Bill Sykes. All in good time, Oliver. All in good time. Now then, let's see. Do you see that silk handkerchief what is protruding from my pocket? Yes. Can you see if you can get it without my noticing it like you saw the others did? Drop a gin. <laughs> all right, settle down, all of you. Dodger, where's your manner? Take your heart off while you're in bed. That's right, Oliver. You're quite the gentleman now. You've got a home, a profession, a shilling on credit. If you go on this way, you'll be the greatest man that ever lived. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Bill, this time, a bit late, isn't it? I mean, where's the common decency? People are trying to sleep around here. I'm just gonna have to give them a piece of my mind, I will. Uh... Bill, what a, what a pleasure to see you. Can I help you, Bill? A silver candlestick. Very nice. You know, it's a shame that we haven't got... We've got a pair. Silver. Shame we haven't got a knife and fork. <laughs> Very nice. You know what, Bill? That's beautiful. <laughs> That's not so beautiful. <laughs> Come on. 
on that over. What? Cash bill? Keep cash around here with all these young little thieves running about? I wouldn't dare. Feigen. Oh, I've got to price the things first. Proper and correct. Same place tomorrow. Three cripples. It's a promise, Bill. A promise. It better be. Dear, you make it all the worthwhile. Pearl, my pretty, I have a special place for you with all my other special lady friends. Pearl, you'll like it there. Pearl, you must meet Crystal. Crystal, this is Pearl. Pearl, this is Crystal. <clears throat> Pearl, you must meet Ruby. Ruby, this is Pearl. Pearl, this is Ruby. <clears throat> You must meet my extra special lady friend. <laughs> Tiara. <laughs> One day, Tiara and I will go out and I will wear my special choker. Very nice. <laughs> One day, I will go out to the opera and I will wear my beautiful opera glasses and I will stare at all the rich people and all the poor <laughs> Why are you awake? What did you see? Quick, quick, speak. I want to hear every detail you saw. I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't speak. Were you awake a quarter of an hour ago? No. Ten minutes ago. I don't think Be so. Sure. Be sure. I'm sure. <laughs> well, uh, if you're sure, then, then I'm sure. You're a very brave boy, Oliver. I only meant to frighten you as all. Did you, uh... See uh, any of those pretty little things, my dear? Yes, sir. Well, they're mine. Private property. They're all I've got to live on in me old age. It's a terrible thing, Oliver. Old age. You think I can get up now, sir? Oh, certainly, my dear. There's a basin of water over there. You can have a wash. But I had a wash yesterday. Well, it's your birthday. Now wash! Flammy and slam! Nancy? Come on, Bert. Wake up, boys. The ladies are here. Well, ladies. Oh, I'll get them. Well, have less of that if you don't mind. Where's the gin, Fagin? Oh, no, 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 no. All in moderation, my dear. All in moderation. Too much gin can be a dangerous thing for such a pure young girl. And what's wrong with a bit of danger, Mr. Fagin? After all, that's the only bit of excitement we have. And who would deny us that small pleasure? Would you? Small pleasures, small pleasures, who would deny us these? Don't mind having a go at our things. It's a fine life. It's a fine life. Oh, it ain't all jolly or pleasure out things. It's a fine life. It's a fine life. When you've got someone to love, you forget your cares and strives. Let the bruise look down and set the wide world from us. It's a fine, fine life. Ain't that right, Brett? Yeah, that's right, Nancy.
me why Though it sometimes touches me For the likes of such as me Mine's a fine I forgot to tell you, you must meet our new lodger, Master Oliver Twist Esquire. Charm, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Surely, we're all qualities here. Don't we're you, all ladies and gentlemen. Don't you take no notice of them, Oliver, just because you've got manners and they ain't. You wouldn't know quality if you saw it. None of you. Dodger? Yeah? Have you seen the way them quality gentlemen treat their ladies? Of course. Shall we show them how it's done? Definitely. All right, so how's it go then, Dodger? It's all bowing and hats off and... So put your petticoat down in the mud, my darling. And I'll go last. No, I'll go last. First job, my dears, I'll be waiting for you when you get back.
has become of Oliver? What has become of the boy? He got taken away in a coach. Who coach? What coach? Where a coach? The old man. They, they nabbed him from the job. They took him to court and we ran. Where to? Quick, speak. I did. Chef's still got it. Blue Ferry. I ran all the way. We were supposed to take care of him. We were supposed to bring him back with us. We were supposed to never let him out of our sight. Oh! One of us, Bill. The new boy. Went out on his first job today with Dodger. Now I'm afraid he might say something which will get us into trouble. That's very likely. You're blown upon, Faggy. And I'm afraid, you see, that if the game was up with us, it would be up with a good many more. And it would come out rather worse for you than it would for me, my dear. Why, you old! Somebody must find out what's been said or done. If he hasn't talked yet, there's still a chance we can get him back without suspicion. We'll nab him the very moment he dares to step out that house. Now who's gonna go? I suppose it'll have to be me. Oh, you set your trap, Dodger! You've caused enough trouble. It's gotta be done quiet. We don't want any fuss. Why, the very thing. Nancy! Why, you're so good with the boy. It's no good trying it on with me. And just what do you mean by that remark? What I say, Bill, I'm not going. Why can't you leave the boy alone? He won't do you no harm. Why can't you leave him where he is, where he'll get the chance of a decent life? You get him back in me, girl, unless you want to feel my hands on your throat. Nancy, if he taught, think of what would happen to us. Think of what would happen to Bill. He'd be the gallows for him, Nancy, the gallows. Now, you wouldn't let that happen, would you, my dear? Not to Bill. Not to your Bill. She'll go, Fagin. No, she won't, Fagin! Yes, she will, Fagin! All right, Bet. Go home. There's a good girl. As long as he needs me, oh yes, he does need me. In spite of what you see, I'm sure that he.
еще sky never did see Who will buy my sweet red roses? Who will tie it up with a ribbon And put it in a box for a So I will see That, sir, is for me to decide. Thank you, Mrs. Bennet. Mr. Brownlow. How do you feel today, my boy? Very happy, sir. May I stay here always, sir? If you wish, dear boy, if you wish. Well, here's a doctor. He's come to see you. Well, he's certainly looking better. But you're not sleeping well, are you? Yes, sir. I did sleep very well. Oh, I have no doubt. Nightmares, eh? No, sir. I don't have dreams. Oh, but you must be hungry, aren't you? No, sir. Not hungry, are you? Not thirsty, are you? If that boy is thirsty, I'll eat my head. Well, I am rather thirsty. Ah, it's very natural to be very thirsty. You may give him a little tea. Thank you, Doctor. May I get up now, sir? Say ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I think you may. And may he have a little fresh air. Don't keep him too cold, Miss Bevan, but don't let him be too warm. For certainly, Doctor. You'd be glad to be up again, Oliver. Do I wear these? Well, you can't wear your old ones. They've gone into the furnace. He's a fine-looking boy, don't you think, Grimwig? I couldn't tell you. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy boys and beef-faced boys. And which is Oliver? Mealy? Where does he come from? No, I haven't the faintest idea. He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. And when the shopkeeper told us what really happened, and he was released by the magistrate. I brought him here to make what amends I could. And I must confess, I found myself strangely attached to the child. He's deceiving you, my friend. He has had a fever. What of that? Good people have fevers, and bad people have fevers too. What do you know of him? Nothing. Only that he's an orphan, and yet it's strange. There's something in that boy's face. I can't seem to explain it, but somewhere I seem to have seen him before. Some a long time ago. Stuff and nonsense. You're imagining things. Yes, what is it? There's someone to see you, sir. Look, do you want it for the book seller, sir? Ah, yes. Now, I've got to give you some. Hey, wait a moment! Hey, come back! Oh, really, really, really particularly wish for some books. You're a ton today! Why not send Oliver with them? Oh, yes. Do let me take the books for you, sir. Please? Oh, um, very well, my boy. Very well. If you wish, you shall. Now, here's what I want you to do. You'll give Mr. Jessop these books. It's just down the road. And say you've come to pay the £4.10 that I owe. Here's £5. No need to rush. But I shall expect you back in ten minutes. She's a very pretty lady, isn't she, sir? Yes, it's a portrait of my daughter Agnes. I'll take the books then, sir. Yes, you take the books. Ha! Huh, you don't really expect him to come back, do you? With a five pound note in his pocket and a new pair of clothes on his back? My dear Mr. Bradlow, if he does, I'll be to my head. Dr. Grimwig, take a look at this portrait. Don't you see an extraordinary resemblance between Oliver and my daughter Agnes? Can't say I do. Well, in ten minutes, Dr. Grimwick, when the boy returns, I think you will see. Yes, Mr. Barlow, ten minutes. Who will buy? Oh. 
So you've come home again, have you, Oliver, my dear? Look at his dogs, Fagin. <laughs> He's like the books too. Caught the little jet, ain't he? <laughs> Delighted to see you looking so well, my dear. The Artful Dodger shall give you a new suit for fear you should spoil that uh, that Sunday one. Why didn't you write and say you were coming? You'd have got something warm for supper. Cool. Look at this. What's that, Feigen? That's mine. Mine, Bill. Mine. No, no, no. You can have the books. That ain't mine. Mine and Nancy's, that is. I'll take the boy back again. Come on, hand over. This is hardly fair, Bill. Hardly fair, is it, Nancy? Fair or not fair? Hand it over, you average show skeleton. Give it here! Yeah. That's for our share of the trouble. And not half enough, neither. Here, you can have the books. Start a library. You can't keep the books or the money. They belong to Mr. Brownman. If he finds out you've got them, you'll, he'll be down here after you. So he'll be down here, will he? Leave him alone, Bill. What did you tell him about us? Nothing. That reminds us to be seen. What did we find out you said anything? Anything out of place? Faking our way to this, some scoundrels told him everything. Help! Help! Oh. Hit me, would ya? Leave him alone, Bill! Split your head open! Go on then, kill me! You'll have to before I let you lay a hand on that boy! Stay out of this, I'm warning you! All right! We've got him back! What's the matter with you? The girl's gone mad, I think, Fagin. No, she hasn't, Fagin! Don't think it! Then be quiet! All this violence! Tell more about us, would ya? I won't stand by to see it done, Bill. Hi, Nancy. You're wonderful tonight. With an actress, such talent. Am I? Take care. I don't overdo it. Cause if I do, I'm gonna put my mark on some of you and I don't care if I aim for it. You? Do you know who you are and what you are? Oh yes, I know all about it. You don't have to tell me. A fine one for the boy to make a friend of you are. Lord help me, I am. I wish I'd been struck down dead before I had the hand of bringing him back here. After tonight, he's a liar and a thief and all that's bad. And ain't that enough for you without Civil words, civil words. We must have civil words, Bill. Civil words? You deserve them from me. I was out on the streets for you when I was a child out of age. And I've been in the same train and the same service for 15 years since. Don't you forget it. Well, what have you had? It's your living, ain't it? Some living, some living. What you deserve, you get. No getting all giving. Must we have murders yet? There'll be murders. Such a happy Watch it, Nancy, make no error. There ain't no in between. Lord, 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 Lord. If you don't mind making a mate of Satan, it's a fine line. Fine line. My life's Satan. If you don't mind keeping the angels waiting, it's a fine line. Fine line. Fine line. I'm prepared to do as you are told. Watch out. It has got a heart of gold. Get out of the job. Such a call. Bill. Take care of him, daughter. And I'll take care of myself.
There is no in between for me But who will take the sea for me? ago tomorrow it was done. It seems like an age. I sold myself for six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, and a milk pot with a bunch of second-hand furniture. And 20 pounds cash. I went very reasonable. Cheap. Dirt cheap. Cheap! You would have been dear at any price and dear enough I paid for you. Lord above knows that. Are you going to sit there snoring all day? I shall sit here as long as I think proper, madam, and although I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh, or cry as the humor strikes me, such as being my prerogative. Your prerogative? I said the word, ma'am. The prerogative of a man is to command. And what's the prerogative of a woman in the name of goodness? To obey, madam! To obey. Your dear unfortunate husband should have taught you that, and then maybe, perhaps, he might have still been alive today, and God, I wish he was. Poor man! Oh, you hard-hearted brute! Oh, here we go. <laughs> Cry away, ma'am. It opens the lungs, exercises the eyes, washes the temper, and washes the face. So cry away, ma'am. Now talk about your prerogative if you dare. Shut up and take yourself away from here before I do something desperate. Where are you going? Certainly, my dear, certainly. I've had no intention of staying. It's just that you're so very violent. What is it? It's old Sally, ma'am, and she says she's got something to tell you that must be heard. She's not got long, and she won't lie quiet to you. Listen, ma'am, you better come in. nursed a pretty young creature that I brought in from the cold with <coughs> her feet cut and bruised with walking. <coughs> she, she gave birth to a boy and died. <coughs> Let me think, what was the year again? Never mind the year, what about her? I robbed her. I robbed her so I did. The only thing she had of any worth, it was round her neck and it was gold. <coughs> gold? Go on. Yes, what of it? This is it. The locket. She charged me to keep it safe and trusted me. It's my belief she came from a rich family. <laughs> the boy's name? They called him... Yes? Oliver. The gold I stole was... Yes, what? <laughs> we must retrieve that boy, Mr. Bumble. We must indeed, ma'am. We must indeed. If the truth were known, we both were delighted at seeing the back of him. All the time, all the time, all we do. We must give him his due. And we'll pray the day somebody gave us praise the fly. Something to say, the reward was a promotion. The time and it's a notion. Praise the Lord, somebody brought us all in.
I understand you bring information regarding the boy Oliver Twist. Yes, we decided to answer to your advertisement. I decided. Yes, that's right. My dear wife decided. Bubbles, my name, sir, beat all the workhouse where this boy was raised for, where he went to an undertaker, which he ran away from. Yes, yes, it's very good of you to come. Now, what have you got to tell me? This locket was given by the last dying mother to my dear wife just before she passed away. The last dying mother, that is, not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you say that when he left your workhouse, you went to an undertaker. That's right, Mr. Savary. The undertaker took Oliver from us for three pounds. You mean to say that you sold him? Like an animal? Well, uh, it was actually Mrs. Bumble who authorized the sale. Really? Now she had neither of you is in a position of trust again. And your behavior, madam, was shameful. Leave my house. Oh, how dare you speak to me so, sir? I came here to help you. You came here in the hope of profiting of your own greed and dishonesty. If you don't belong that trinket belonged to my dear wife. Oh, shut up, you old fool. Here, ten pounds, and consider yourself fortunate they don't find themselves in the hands of the law. Mrs. Bedwin, throw these ghastly people out. Yes, sir. We know the way out, thank you very much. I hope this unfortunate little circumstance does not deprive me of my parochial office. Indeed it will, and you may think yourself well off besides. Well, it was all Mrs. Bumble, she would do it. That is no excuse. You are present on the occasion when the boy was sold, and indeed are the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. For the if law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If that's the eye of the law, then the law is a faction. And if that's the eye of the law, the law is an ass. And if the worst I wish on the law is that its eye may be opened by experience. By experience! There's a young woman in the place, sir. Mrs. Fedwin, take a look at this miniature. Can you see who it is? Why, it's Miss Agnes, sir. Yes, my daughter Agnes. She must have found a way to the workhouse and a child there. If only she told us. Mrs. Bedwin, who is this? It's about the boy, sir. Have you news of Oliver? He, he's in danger in bad company. He was dragged off the day you sent him out with those books. Who took him? Uh, me and someone else. Where can I find him? Who's this other person you speak of? Take no, me to. No, I can't. I shouldn't have said that. Well, now, come sit down. You want to help the boy, don't you? Why else are you here? I do, uh, but I can't. Well, then at least tell me where I can find him. Uh, no, but, but I can bring him to you. Where Not then? here, though. Not here, it's too far. Where then? The bridge, the London Bridge, tonight at midnight. But you've got to come on your own. Promise me you'll come alone. You don't believe me, do you? Well, if you want the boy back, you've got to believe me, please. Very well, I'll be there. Thank God. Wait, has the boy been hurt? Ill treated? If so, I shall. No, no, I can't say any more. He'll kill me as it is if he finds out where I've been. Who is this man? Perhaps we can... No, we can't. Whatever else I do, I won't turn on him. I understand, my dear. But the man who might kill you? Yes, but he's mine, and I'm his. I've got to go back. I want to go back. Do you think you can trust her, Mr. Bronlo? I'm afraid we have no choice, Mr. Bedwin. <laughs>
strange, but it's possible. All oh, my dearest companions and treasures, I've left them behind. But I'll turn a leaf over, who can tell what I may find. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh